How's it going, folks? I uh, just wanted to make a little video today and do some explaining about some things um, as far as playing cover songs go for artists who are out there working. It's been a tough year for all of us. Really, it's uh, it's hard for everybody in the music business right now that's not, you know, playing uh, on the Country Music Awards or, or some big-time act. I'm sure those folks are are doing their own thing and having their own difficulties. But for us little folks, uh, people that play clubs and bars and make a living doing that, it's been a really tough time. Um, and I just wanted to touch on why I don't play cover songs because I get a lot of requests from some of the audiences at different places. I even have some of the proprietors of some of the venues that I've played at uh, recently and for years in the past asked me would I play pop cover songs, rock and roll cover songs, uh, just to please these certain people in the audience. So I wanted to touch on that today, tell you guys what I thought about it, why I don't do it, why I don't think other people should do it, and really just let you know where I stand on that. So when I'm talking about cover songs, I'm really talking about things that you would hear on the radio, pop music, and that could be classic rock, it could be R&B, it could be... Uh, you know, something from the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, but something that has become very popular and people can sing along with because you get a lot of, uh, of spectators who they, they just want to have a sing along experience with whoever's playing, um, at a bar. And, and this has been perpetuated and, you know, I'm not faulting anybody that does that type of music. If that's how you make a living and that's what you like to do and, and that's what's working for you, more power to you. Um, but I, I personally am greatly appreciative of not only the venues who support people that don't necessarily play cover songs, but especially the artists that are out there, uh, breaking their backs, putting themselves out there and refusing to do this type of, of, of music. To me, it, it's, it equates to... A painter or a, a, a visual artist if they were copying some other piece of art that's famous you know if you're a painter and all you do is 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 stroke for stroke Van Gogh's like that's cool that you can do that but how much appreciation does that really deserve artistically and in my personal opinion I would say I don't really have a great appreciation for that Again, there's people that probably do that, that would love you just because um, you can copy something else or you can take somebody else's work and put a spin on it. And, and it's something that this that these um, observers are already a little comfortable with. They don't have to branch out. They don't have to think outside of the piece of art that already exists. And this is very much the same as people who are out there playing songs that you hear on the radio, you know, I can't tell you how many times over the past 25 years I've had somebody holler out, play Sweet Home Alabama or something like that. And, you know, that's a cool song, but that's what the radio in your car is made for. So you can listen to that on the ride home and you and your friends can sing along to that. Um, and, and that's cool, but out at a venue when you're seeing an artist play, they're usually trying to do something, it may not be 100% original, but they're trying to do something to bring something else to the music that they're playing and add something to the world of music and the world of art. Um, me personally, I, I only play blues music. I, I really, I wasn't raised listening to rock and roll or country particularly. I don't, I couldn't name three country songs, to be honest with you. I just don't know that music. I wasn't brought up in it. I didn't learn on that stuff. And same thing with rock and roll. I just don't know that music. And so I get these people that think that I can just whip out these songs that they love their whole life, you know, like I've got some kind of 
tape recorder and, and the words will scroll up in front of me and I can just do this for them anytime they want. And, and a lot of people get mad when, when I don't do this. And so I, I'm speaking right now just to, to obviously, you know, if you're watching this, you know who I am to some degree but also to the public in general and particularly to venues. And I would can't thank you enough to the venues who do support original artists and, and original music and have stood beside and behind these folks and, and paid them, you know, not always that much, but you're supporting us probably the best way that you can. Um, and giving us a venue with which to play. And, and I've got a, several of those that I'm super thankful of. Um, I'm not going to rattle them off right now, but if you you know, follow me on the social media and such, and, and if you're watching this video, obviously you probably do. But you, you know the venues that I play at regularly, and most of them are, are pretty accepting of what I do. And like I said, I play blues music. It's all I know. I can't do anything else. Um, I don't know how to play another type of music. And even more specifically, I play hill country blues, North Mississippi hill country blues, which is a very pigeonhole genre, I know. But it's literally, that's what I do. Um, and the reason why that's all I do is because that's what I do the best. Um, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. I'm, I'm certainly not the best. I'm just out here trying to scratch out a living like everybody else is. But... That's a type of music that I know backwards and forwards. I've known some of those guys that that popularized that music. I've been to that area. I've talked with these folks. I've spent time with them. I've studied with them. I've studied their music. I've studied their records. I've played festivals with these folks. Um, that's what I know. And that's why that's really all I play because I consider myself to be a professional and also an artist. I'm not just a musician. I don't just play the guitar. Um, I try to make my own Hill Country Blues music and, and I've got three records that I've released and I'm proud of all three of them. Um, the, the second and third record is 100% original material. My first record has got some standards on there um, that I do. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm really proud of those and I, I stand behind those records. Listen to them. Tell me what you think. Uh, they're available for free. You know, you can listen to all that music online. And if you want to throw me 10 bucks for a copy of all of it, thank you. But if you don't, you know, I appreciate you listening and, 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 you know, telling me what you think about it. Uh, you can find most of it on my YouTube channel. Um, just John Sosby on YouTube. Now, I do have a whole album on the YouTube as well that's nothing but Hill Country Tributes that uh, me and my stepbrother did um, years ago uh, where it's nothing but us playing Hill Country standards. And, and this is something that people get confused about as well. There's, there are standards in genre music, and particularly in Hill Country Blues. And when I say a standard, what I mean is a song that has been done over and over and over and over by many different artists throughout the years. Um, I do several of those in my show. Um, I can't say it's my song, but I do do them my way, but I can't really say I'm covering another artist's version of that song either. Now, I take things from people. That's what artists do. We steal from everybody and everything around us, and, and we put it together, and we make our own thing out of it, and that's what you know, that's how this has always worked. The first person that ever made music, they heard a bird singing in the woods or something like that, or uh, music didn't come from human beings, to be honest. It's evolved over time with us, and it comes from nature, and we build on one thing on another, and it turns into something, you know, amazing that we have now. But I do do uh, several Hill Country standards, and I'm proud of those as well. Like, my versions of those songs are different than anybody else's. Um, I, I admit I will do an R.L. Burnside cover every once in a while. I'll, I'll throw an Alice May in there, and that's a song that, that R.L. wrote about his wife, and it's his song, and I, I will throw that one in from time to time. I will do a Junior Kimbrough song from time to time. Um... At this point, 30 years after those guys have 
pretty much disappeared. They, you know, RL and Junior have passed away at this point, but they really haven't been performing since the late 90s. Um, most of their tunes, a lot, I'm not going to say most of them, a lot of their tunes have become standards that almost everybody in the Hill Country Blues world is is doing a version of, of a couple of those different things. And that is great. But that is different than a cover song. That's different than playing a Sweet Home Alabama, a Johnny Cash tune, um, some kind of 90s alternative thing that everybody can sing along with. Or, you know, the, the grossest, most disgusting song you'll hear, The Wagon Wheel. You know, again, more power to people who are out there making a living and, and pleasing crowds, doing that stuff. But I personally don't want to have anything to do with that. I don't want to hear that artist. I don't want to hear them play that song. And to be honest, I don't really want to play at a venue that caters to a, a crowd that that's all they want. Um, that may cost me money. It may cost me fans. It, it, it may cost me some kind of degree of popularity. And I'm fine with that because, again, I consider myself to be an artist. I care very deeply about this music that I play. And I'm sure any of you that have seen me play and really paid any attention, uh, you can tell that I love what I do. And, and it means a lot to me on, on many different levels. It's not just something I do for work or for money on the side. Um, and this is what I do for a living. And it has been for a long time. But... I really do care deeply about this music and preserving it and keeping it the way that all of us that are involved in it think that it should be. Um, now, again, I'm, I'm at a low level. I'm not a big guy. Nobody knows who the hell I am. I'm just some, you know, white kid in North Georgia playing North Mississippi blues. But I have taken this music all over the country. I've played at a bunch of festivals all over the place. Um, like I said, I've studied with these guys. I've studied their music. I, I've played with them and, and before them and after them at, at all kinds of places. Um, and and I've, I've paid my dues as far as that goes. And I feel like I have something to offer. Um, so to sum it up, really what I'm saying is for you folks that are fans of mine or just casual observers of my show, people in the crowd who uh, who have appreciated it and supported me over the years. You don't know how much it means to, to me personally and to everybody that is out there trying to play original music, bring something new to the table. Um, your, your support is, is literally invaluable. Um, there, there's nothing I can say or do to show the appreciation that we all have for you. And for the venues that support us, you know, we, we wouldn't be here without you. Music would literally be dead and gone to a huge extent if a lot of small venues that struggle to get by were not supporting original music. I, I don't know how it is all over the country, but I've been out in L.A., uh, up until a year ago, I had lived there for about five or six years, and man, the music is just dead out there. There's nothing going on. There's nothing new coming out of there. Nobody cares about live music on that side of the world right now. It's depressing, but it is what it is. You know, they all want to DJ because all the folks... Personally, I think it's because of the... the uh, <laughs> phenomenon that everybody thinks they're their own celebrity at this point with the social media and everything. Everybody wants to be uh, the center of attention, and so they don't really like to go to a show unless it's your Kanye or, um, you know, some Jay-Z show at, at, at Staples Center or something like that. Nobody gives a damn about anything else. Nobody says, I went out to this dive bar and and heard the, these folks that are, are out of the middle of nowhere that nobody knows about, and man, they were really good. You just don't see that happening in a lot of places. Luckily, here in the Atlanta area, um, North Georgia, like we, it's still holding on, man. And I used to do old-time music show with my cousin, one of my best friends in the world, Johnny White, and 
we play traditional Appalachian uh, folk tunes, fiddle and banjo stuff. And we took that all over the place. We played all over the East Coast. We played all kinds of shows everywhere because it was a culturally relevant music that had absolutely died out in most places. It was really hard to find. Um, when people did hear it, they had kind of a visceral response to it because it, it, it was something important. It was obviously something that needed to stay around. And unfortunately, Johnny White's not with us anymore. And I don't know anybody in this area that's playing that music. I do a little banjo lessons here and there. Uh, but I don't play any of those shows anymore. I don't have a fiddle player, you know. Um, nobody wants to hear me just sit there and bang on the banjo all night. Um, but even when we were in that, you know, it was hard to keep it going. It was hard to find venues that would support that, that would take that step to, to just give us enough to show up because people think that, you know, we're making tons of money and, and it's all fun. And since we love it, uh, we should be able to do it for a little bit of just, you know, $50 or something. That ain't even enough to show up at a place. I mean, you got to think about the hours and hours and days and months and years that go into crafting these things. And in my show that I do now, my Hill Country Blues show, um, you know, I do a one-man band show. I play the drum set with my feet. I'm playing the guitar. I'm singing. I'm doing all this. Not because I think that's the, necessarily the best. I would love to have a bass player with me like I used to have years ago um, and doing some foot stuff with him, but I can't afford to pay him. Um, I can't afford to bring anybody out with me. I would actually love to have a band. I played with a band for many years and did this music my, that way. My last album is, is with a drummer and a bass player in a traditional band setup. And it's just not possible right now. It's not happening. There's not the support for it. Now, hopefully with COVID wrapping up or, you know, coming to some kind of uh, settlement in the world, whatever it is, uh, things are coming back slowly, but there's trends now, just like with the job market, there, there's things that happened over this past year and a half that may never change. Like people have found these modes of living that they're comfortable with right now, and it may never go back to the way it was. Uh, that, that's, if you look at history and, and you, you do some studying about anthropology and, you know, human nature, uh, we're habitual creatures and we get into these modes and it's really hard to reverse something and bring things back that have died out. It's just not, lots of times it, it's, it's, we don't know it until it's gone and you don't appreciate things until it's gone. So for all of you that have made it 18 minutes into this video, uh, I appreciate your time. I do. I always appreciate you folks that come out and support me. Like I said, there's nothing I can do or say to tell you how much I do appreciate it. It, it means the world to me. Um, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here doing this stuff. I, I hope it's a long time, but I don't know. Um, it's been a tough, tough year for me. Probably the worst, worst year of my life um, this past year. And not, I don't want you to feel sorry for me because I, I live a charmed existence for sure. But it gets harder to bring this to you folks every day. And I, I thank all of you venues that support us. I, I can't thank you enough. And I thank all of the fans that come out. And if you do like this music, if you do appreciate some originality in your artwork, um, if you want to see culturally relevant music stay alive uh you know buy those records of the people you hear on the radio by all means but go buy two from somebody that's not making it on the radio uh bill maher says that it's the great equalizer with the internet and to some degree i i agree with that like the fact that we can all put our music out there to be judged by everybody and some folks get zero listeners and some folks get 10 million. Like that is a democracy vote there. But at the same time, that's the, there's a little man behind that curtain that's pulling some strings. Uh, the whole story is not told with downloads and Spotify plays 
there there's a machine behind that like there always has been. You used to have to pay a couple hundred thousand dollars to get your song on the radio back in the 90s. Now it, it's not that much different to get those those Spotify plays and, and pop up on those charts and have people get exposed to your music. It's a pay-to-play environment. It is not a strict meritocracy. And again, I'm not the best. I'm just some guy that d just does what I do, and I'm all right at it. I, I'm, I'm not, you know, a great beacon for anybody to hold up and, and, and find their way home with, but... Uh, I think I do have a little bit of something to offer. And again, I thank all of you for supporting me. As far as the venues go, find the folks that aren't doing cover songs. Cater to that crowd uh, that wants to hear something real. So many times here lately, it's a couple of these venues that I've played, I've had a host of people come up and say, I didn't know this place had real music. I thought all they did was cover songs. And it's, you know, come to my attention that pretty much everybody else that plays there is just literally doing Purple Rain and, you know, which we all love Prince. I'm not hating on that. Uh, or some Credence Clearwater or, or some Nirvana. Or, and, and those are all awesome things, man. I, I love listening to that on my stereo at home just as much as anybody does. But when you take that guitar out of your house... You have an obligation to do something special and to bring something new to it. And so I'll leave it at that. If, if you've made it 21, 22 minutes into this, thanks for watching. Uh, if you see this on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. If you're seeing it on Facebook, check out my music online. I would greatly appreciate it. Come see a show. Uh, I'll sit and talk to you and bullshit with you, and, and we'll have a good time. And um, for all you folks that know me personally, uh, I'm sure none of this surprises you, and I hope to see you soon. So, adios, amigos.